Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. I am uh, Tyler Harper, and I'm honored to be the Commissioner of Agriculture uh, for our great state. Uh, this morning, joining me, uh, Dr. Will Hudson. Uh, he is with the University of Georgia College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences and also uh, with the college's Dr. Keith Bellplain. Uh, we also have Carl Lightfoot, who is the State uh, Plant Health Director at USDA Animal Plant Health uh, and Inspection Service. Um, we're here this morning to announce the confirmed detection of yellow leg hornets in the state of Georgia. This is the first detection of live yellow leg hornet in the open United States. In other words, this is the first time that this has ever been detected uh, in the United States. If established, this invasive species could threaten native pollinators in our state and negatively impact our agricultural industry as a whole. Earlier this month, the beekeeper in Savannah uh, found unusual hornet on their property and reported it to the Department of Agriculture. And I want to thank Mike Evans and our plant uh, inspection team uh, and our plant protection division and the work that they did uh, in quickly responding to this. Uh, we worked with the University of Georgia to identify uh, and UGA identified the specimen as a yellow legged hornet. On August 9th, the university's identification of the hornet was confirmed by USDA APHIS. As I said earlier, this is the first detection in the open U.S. I want to thank USDA APHIS and the University of Georgia, the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences for their swift work to investigate and to confirm the detection. The Department of Agriculture, USDA, and the University of Georgia College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences has been in constant communication and we're working together to develop a plan to track, trap, and eradicate the yellow leg hornet in the state of Georgia. Just a little background, the hornet feeds on a variety of insects, including honeybees and other native pollinators. If allowed to establish in the state of Georgia and the United States, this pest could threaten honeybee production, native pollinators, and the agricultural industry in the state of Georgia. The hornet is a social wasp that creates egg-shaped paper nests above the ground, often found in trees. The hornet is native to tropical and subtropical regions in Southeast Asia. It is also established in much of Western Europe, parts of the Middle East, and parts of Asia where it is not native. Our partners representing the University of Georgia College of Ag and UGA Extension will provide additional background uh, in just a few minutes uh, when I turn the podium over to them. This is a significant threat to Georgia agriculture. Uh, Georgia agriculture does depend on pollinators. Uh, if established, it could threaten the pollinators, as I said, and threaten our ag industry as a whole. American farmers grow more than 100 different crops that require pollination. USDA estimates that pollinators add over 18 billion in revenue to U.S. crop production every year, and roughly one third of food consumed by Americans comes from food or crops that require pollination. Many of these crops are grown by Georgia producers. They include apples, blueberries, and watermelons, just to name a few. In Georgia, as many of you know, agriculture is our number one industry. It's the backbone of our economy. Almost 400,000 Georgians are employed. It constitutes about 75 billion to our state's economic engine every year. Growing up on a family farm as a seventh generation farm boy myself, I understand the importance uh, of agriculture to our state, to farm families all across the state and what it means uh, to our state and know that agriculture is more than a job, it's a way of life. I'm committed to protecting that way of life and protecting our farmers' livelihoods and protecting our food supply against potential threats such as this invasive species. Through the department, we're working with our federal partners and scientists from UGA to develop and implement a plan, as I said earlier, to trap, track, and eradicate any additional hornets that may be found in the state of Georgia. The Department of Agriculture's PEST program has a dedicated team of scientists who are working in collaboration with our other partners to identify any of those additional hornets and eradicate them immediately. The department and USDA uh, we'll set out traps to survey for the pest to determine if there are any additional hornets in the area, yellow-legged hornets in the area. If a colony is discovered through trapping, tracking, or reporting, it will be eradicated. I want to thank our friends at USDA, at UGA, for their swift work again 
uh, to identify the pests, uh, the invasive species, and for their continued support and coordination as we work to eradicate the yellow-legged hornet in the state of Georgia. So what we're asking today is that the public plays an important role in this. I want to thank the beekeeper in Savannah who took the opportunity to reach out to our department to make sure we were aware of the issue. We're asking the public to do the same. If you see a suspected sighting of the yellow-legged hornet, please report that to the Department of Agriculture immediately. An online reporting form and additional information about the yellow-legged hornet is available on our website at www.agr.georgia.gov and are prominently <coughs> displayed on our website's homepage. Georgians with questions regarding the yellow-legged hornet can email us directly at yellow period leg period hornet at agr.georgia.gov. These hornets can be dangerous and we urge Georgians to use caution if they encounter a suspected yellow legged hornet and take photographs from a safe distance as those photographs can help us confirm the identity of the hornet. We encourage Georgians to submit those photos with their reports and do so safely as this is generally the fastest way to make that identification. Again, this is an important issue uh, it is, in, it, it, as I stated earlier, this is the first detection in our state, uh, and it is very detrimental to the honeybee population and our pollinator population, which can be detrimental to Georgia agriculture. And so we want to ensure that Georgians know that this is, a, this is an important issue that we need to work together to address. And at the department with USDA and our, our friends at UGA, uh, both uh, Extension and our research side, we look forward to collaborating together and working together to ensure that we eradicate the hornet in the state of Georgia. At this time, I want to turn it over to Dr. Delaplane and Dr. Hudson for any remarks that they may have in addition to the ones that I've already made, and uh, I'll turn the podium over to them. Dr. Delaplane, Dr. Hudson. Thank you, Commissioner. It's an honor to be here and represent the University of Georgia College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. My name is Keith Delaplane. I'm the honeybee specialist in the Department of Entomology. Um, this is um, unwelcome news. We're talking about a beekeeping industry that is already uh, beleaguered with other biotic problems, such as exotic parasites and diseases. Uh, this is one more stressor that they will now have to deal with. Um, it is, in my opinion, not a serious public health threat to Georgians. Uh, if you look at data from China, for instance, we have records of 54 human deaths over two years in a country of over a billion people. Uh, I do not consider this a grave risk you know, for our state, for humans and their pets, but for beekeepers, I do think this is a, a, a grave concern. The Asian, um, formerly known as the Asian hornet, currently the yellow-legged hornet, the subject of today, is a voracious predator of honeybees. Uh, its nickname is the bee hawk, uh, for good reason. Uh, they're very agile. They can swoop down and capture honeybees in air and from the front of their hives. And in this manner, a few individuals can depopulate an apiary over a matter of days. So this is a, an aggressive problem. Uh, this will be something that beekeepers will have to learn how to deal with, whether through trapping or through methods of excluding them from their hives. Uh, for the common public, um, the commissioner has already stressed how we're going to be relying on citizen scientists and citizens of the state to document this insect. On websites maintained by the Georgia Department of Agriculture and UGA, we will have very detailed uh, illustrations, photographs, how to uh, distinguish this hornet from other lookalikes that are common here in this state and region. Um, we may hear occasion of comparisons to the northern giant hornet, which was making news a couple years ago from the Pacific Northwest. I want to stress, this is not the same insect. This is a different hornet. It is not the giant northern hornet that we have heard about before. But as far as its depredations on honeybees, it's at least as bad. So um, be on the lookout for these uh, newcomers to our state. Uh, access the resources that will be made available to you um, and report them to um, the Department of Agriculture's reporting site, which will be up and running. And uh, this is our best tool to monitor the spread of this and ultimately we hope to eradicate this point source infestation. Uh, with that, I will 
cede the podium to my colleague, Dr. Will Hudson. Really? Dr. Um, nice Fisher. Uh, I don't really have much to add to what Keith just said. The, the role of the College of Agriculture and, uh, and Environmental Sciences at the University of Georgia is uh, to support and assist the Georgia Department of Agriculture in their efforts here. Uh, we, our Extension Service has an office in every state and uh, every county in the state of Georgia. We have county agents all around that are well trained and uh, experienced with response to this sort of thing. Um, so they provide a conduit for information in both ways, out to the public and from the public back here. Um, uh, there are counties in Georgia that don't have internet access, so getting to anybody's website can be a challenge. Um, but uh, getting to your county office is not. So that's, that's what we at the College of Agriculture and the University of Georgia uh, sort of bring to the table, I guess. Uh, we have a lot of information, we have a lot of expertise that we're, we stand ready to help. So uh, with that, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hudson. Um, I think as you can see, uh, the importance of this issue, as Dr. Hudson and Dr. Delaplane laid out, uh, the, uh, the hornet is very detrimental to our pollinator populations, uh, which in turn is detrimental to Georgia agriculture because of the amount of products and, and crops that we grow in the state of Georgia that depend on pollination and depend on pollinators uh, for those crops to be uh, successful. So this could be detrimental to our number one industry and that's why we're taking it seriously here at the department. Uh, that's why USDA and our friends at UGA are taking it seriously as well. And we're committed to working to, uh, to eradicate uh, the, the found hornet um, if we find any more. Uh, and we're going to work to look to see if we find those and we need uh, the public's help in, in doing so and, and, and we would ask for that. Uh, just for clarification, we did find uh, two uh, in the same location. Two hornets were found in the same location uh, and they have both been confirmed as the yellow-legged uh, hornet. Um, so that is all that has been found so far. Uh, but we're going to work to ensure that uh, hopefully we don't find any more. Um, but we're going to work to, to ensure that if we do find any more that they are they are addressed. I'll open it up for any questions that you may have uh, and we'll, we'll work to answer those. They have to come from a pretty long way. Is it tropical native? So yeah, so these are uh, the hornet is native uh, to western uh, actually it's native to subtropical regions in Southeast Asia. It has been uh, discovered in Western Europe, Middle East, and parts of Asia where it is not native. It is obviously not native to the United States. It is an invasive species here. Uh, we uh, actually uh, don't really have a clear answer as to how it got to Georgia. Uh, we just know that it, uh, it is here uh, in the Savannah area and uh, is where it was found. Um, and at this point, our, our efforts are focused on uh, locating and trafficking any additional yellow-legged hornets that may be out there. With your experience, how does something like this happen? You said you don't know how it happened, but like, how does something like this happen? Well, I mean, you know, look, there's a, a various different ways in, in travel. Uh, you know, it could have come from a different, a variety of different ways that it could have got to the United States. I don't know if y'all want to expand on that at all, uh, whether through uh, uh, shipments uh, from other countries, uh, soil, shipping containers, um, but we don't really know how it got here. We just know that we found it. Uh, beekeeper found it, we confirmed it, uh, and now we're working to find any additional that may be here in the United States to make sure that they get eradicated. Have you found any nests or signs of a colony? So far there has been no nest or no colony found. Uh, we are looking. Uh, I think most of their nests will be found in trees, high up in trees, uh, and I'll, I'll let y'all expand on the nest or the colonies if you want to. <laughs> but we, we haven't found any nest or colonies. Y'all want to talk about what the what colonies may look like or what you might be looking for? Um, this is a mobile insect that has spread around the world. It's most likely best chance of spreading is the overwintering females. Uh, their life cycle, the females and males mate in late summer and then all of the workers die. And then the mated females overwinter, come out next spring and start the colony cycle all over again. 
So oftentimes what happens, these overwintering females will find some little safe nook to lodge in. In one case, there was uh, females, uh, mated females transmitted in crates of stacked pottery. It's a perfect little protected nook for them to be in for overwintering, which got picked up and shipped over and moved. So it's these kinds of introductions that are most likely with, with this insect. Their nests visually look similar to types of hornets that we're already familiar to. They make a paper nest, circular in form. Uh, occasionally, they will start a nest close to the ground and either expand that existing nest or the colony will relocate into the upper levels of a tree and start all over again about halfway through the season and make a bigger paper nest. So there's a lot there that's familiar to Georgians. It is a hornet. It nests in trees and it makes round paper nests. Uh, but that is probably how it spread. You said it's not much of a threat to humans. Are the stingers kind of similar to bees? Or? The stingers are comparable to the hornets that we're already familiar to in this country. And as far as a, you know, an epidemiological health risk to Americans, a pretty low risk if you consider data from China. I think the comparable data for the United States, we get about 72 deaths a year from all stinging insects combined. So this is not a big risk for public health reasons, but they really do laser in on honeybees in particular, and that's where we're most concerned here. Uh, their contribution to agriculture is profound. Uh, Commissioner, we have one of the most pollinator-dependent sets of crops grown in the country right here in Georgia. Uh, watermelon top the list as far as their pollinator dependence. Blueberries come really close behind. And you add all that up, it's over $430 million a year to our agricultural economy just in this state. So that's really what's at risk here, is the, the, the plentitude of our food, the variety of our food, the cheapness of our food, and its quality and healthful variety. And that's ultimately what's at stake here. From the date of discovery and the, the mating season that you described, what is the next month that we should look out for? Oh, thank you for reminding me of that. Um, what is likely, given their spring cycle is we probably have, uh, it's likely that this colony was established earlier in the year and maybe just now reached a size where it's easy to detect the workers. So it's possible that this individual, this, this colony started last spring, uh, grew all over winter, or summer rather, sorry, and to a point where it's foraging actively enough that its workers can be detected. The cycle usually plays out and the numbers of workers die as summer comes to an end, and so the risk to beekeepers and humans likewise declines in fall and winter, but then that overwintered queen will come back next spring to start the cycle over again. So it's usually a rush of identifications this time of year, you know, late summer going into fall before it crashes. It does have a very strong annual life cycle. Any idea where the traps are going to be set up? Are these at beekeeper farms or open these, spaces? They're, the traps are more like detection stations. They are attract, they're meteors. And that's an important point. You know, wasps are carnivorous, bees are vegetarians. You know, bees eat pollen and nectar from plants. So these hornets are interested in protein baits. Our colleagues from Washington who work with the northern giant hornet, which is different again, uh, has uh, said for this bee that this, this hornet prefers rotting fish. It's a bit unfortunate because they do their bait stations in the Pacific Northwest with spoiling orange juice. Our scouts are going to have to deal with spoiling fish. So, but they prefer this, they seek it, they find it, they take it back to their nest. Um, you can either track these foragers visually, sometimes technology may come to an aid and you can a tracking device on the thorax of the insect and then track its nest. There's various you know, technologies available to do this. And then once the physical nest is detected, it can be removed. And so this, there's, the good thing is this trail has been blazed before, you know, between our colleagues in Washington State with the giant hornet and with our colleagues in Europe with the yellow-legged hornet. Lots of people have worked with this for over 20 years. And we really hope to zero in on their expertise. Uh, we have colleagues that we're in conversation with in England right now to give us advice and guidance on the methods that they use in that country to contain the spread of the yellow-legged hornet. 
And so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we have that resource to fall upon. The two that you found, were they, were they, are they able to reproduce? Are they able to mate and <clears throat> produce others? They, the colony will produce. I mean, the, the two, the two yellow jackets. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, the two individuals. Male, female, male, male, female, female. They unlikely. It, it's very unlikely that these individuals are fertile. These are very strongly. They're workers, and workers in social insect colonies are sterile and do not reproduce themselves. They come from a colony that can produce sterile females and fertile females and males. Is there a specific area where you plan to start looking and monitoring for the? Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll start in the location where the, the two were found, which was in the Savannah area, and that's where our efforts will be focused on uh, in that general vicinity. Uh, I, I know Dr. Hudson, Dr. L. Plain, Della Plain can speak to this better than I, but uh, if there is a colony, if there is a nest, it would be in that general vicinity because those worker bees are not going to go very far from where that colony or that, uh, that nest may be. So we're going to start focusing our efforts in the area where they were found. Uh, and obviously, if other detections are found in other parts of the state, uh, we will be uh, executing uh, the same task in those parts of the state as well. How many are generally in a colony? So about 6,000. Uh, I called on a friend. <laughs> Is there like one tried and true method to get birds to eradicate them? Do you, uh, do you want to speak to that? <laughs> Methods for eradicating the colony um, are, are relatively easy. There is an industry sprouted up in Korea, in South Korea, that does this very thing. Essentially, they contain the nest in netting. You know, the workers have on bee protective clothing, and they enclose the nest with netting, and they kind of beat on it and agitate it, and the workers come out. And in this manner, they capture most of the workers, and then they can just physically cut off the nest, and then you can be treated any number. You can be fumigated with improved insecticide, killed, heat to death in the sun. Uh, but that's usually the most direct way. Two questions. Um, what uh, would you say to the public? What are, what are the most um, distinctive characteristics of this insect that people should be looking at? Probably distinguishing it from other species. Thank you. Um, the distinguishing characteristics, this hornet looks very similar in size to the hornets that we're already familiar with. Its um, workers are about an inch long. The coloration is a little more strongly black and yellow. On the fourth abdominal segment, it's very strongly yellow, with a yellow band. Otherwise, the rest of the insect is pretty much black. It gets its name, the yellow-legged hornet, obviously, because it has yellow legs, but only in the bottom half of the legs. So you do have to look a little bit from the side of the insect to make sure of that. Um, it is not very big. It's only about an inch long and uh, superficially similar to, to what we already have. Um, any advice for beekeepers in the state? What, what can they do to, uh, or should they do to protect their hives? The most important thing that beekeepers can do at this point is to be vigilant and look out for predatory behavior at their hive entrances. Uh, the, the, the hornets can be very aggressive, swoop down. They're very visible, they're easy to see. Probably the most important thing to do is to report uh, these sightings to the Georgia Department of Agriculture because that is the only way that we can collectively contain the spread of this invasive species. So you can always kill individuals, but report those individuals after you've killed them. If you take photographs, which we highly encourage, you can take them from the top of the insect, also take it from the side of the insect after you've killed it. Give us a lot of angles of view. Do you have a photo today to provide? We, so uh, we will be providing uh, some additional information. A lot of the information we've shared today will be available via a press release, but also our, uh, our comms team here at the department will be providing uh, photographs uh, of the, of the uh, yellow-legged hornet. Uh, there is also information available through USDA, and that information will be also additionally available through the information that we're going to provide uh, via the, the information that will be coming from our comms department to all of you, uh, and uh, in, in additional ways that you can identify uh, this particular hornet versus other hornets uh, that you may see. Any other questions? 
Well, thank y'all very much. Uh, thank you for being here. As you can tell, this is a very important issue uh, for Georgia agriculture, uh, and we're taking this very seriously. I, again, I want to appreciate our team here at the department, Mike and his team, and our plant protection division, our friends at USDA, at APHIS, as well as our, uh, our friends at the University of Georgia College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, uh, for the collaborative effort that we're, we're taking this uh, approach. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, ensuring that this issue is resolved and the, and the hornet is eradicated in our state. Thank y'all for being here. We appreciate it very much. Y'all have a wonderful day.